Hi, this is John Kovach of Flywater Travel. In this video, I'm going to speak about Cayo Largo, Cuba. Cayo Largo is an absolutely beautiful island located off Cuba's south coast. It's at the very eastern end of what's known as the Cana Reyes Archipelago. The archipelago itself starts to the west with Island of the Youth, which is also a popular fishing destination, and then ends to the east with Cayo Largo itself, and it's actually all one continuous habitat. And I'll talk about that in detail as we get into the fishing itself. Cayo Largo means Long Island in Spanish, and if you look at a satellite image of the island, you understand why. It's oriented east and west, and it's long and skinny. It's about 16 miles long and never more than about a mile wide. Now, if you are interested in visiting Cayo Largo and Cuba in general, it's important to understand that the island itself was developed for tourists, so there are no Cuban villages here or towns or anything like that for you to visit. The workers that are here are, of course, Cuban, and they work in the resorts themselves. They work as fishing guys, and they work on dive boats and any other of the sailing boats and things that are there for tourist activities. And they live in apartments that are built for them, and they spend 20 days on, and then they leave for 10 days and go home to visit their families. If you're going to travel to Cairo Largo from the U.S., you'll almost always come in through Havana. Then you'll take a short commuter flight down to Cairo Largo. That flight is only about 30 minutes long because it's just over 100 miles to get down to Cairo Largo. But to put a point on how imp important the island itself is for tourism, there's an international airport here with flights coming directly from Canada, Western Europe, and South America. Now, this island is just a haven for people wanting to escape winter. So you can imagine, you know, a family from Toronto in February you know, coming to a place like Cairo Largo or people that live in London and they've had three or four months of, you know, gray skies. They step off the plane, it's warm, they go to a beautiful resort, they walk on a white sandy beach and it's absolute heaven for them. So one way or another, if you're a general tourist or if you're an angler, you're going to arrive here on Cairo Largo at the airport and then you'll be spending your time at one of the beautiful resorts that's been built here for tourists. <laughs> So as I mentioned, Cayo Largo is considered a top-notch tourist destination with beautiful accommodations. Typically those accommodations are all-inclusive resorts. Now if you've not stayed in an all-inclusive resort before, just a reminder that that means that everything is really paid for in advance. Your accommodations are paid for in advance and all your meals and all your drinks and a lot of the amenities, etc. are paid for in advance as part of your package. Now, these resorts are just beautiful and they've got a little bit for everybody and if you're an angler that has people in your family or a spouse that likes to go with you on a fishing destination but needs stuff to keep them occupied, this is a great destination and I'll tell you from experience, I know that this is not easy. We get questions from people all the time wanting to go to Belize or Mexico or the Bahamas or Cuba in this case and bring a spouse who doesn't fish or bring their family but they need a place that those people can be occupied and there are three places in Cuba where they can do that Cayo Santa Maria, Cayo Cruz and Cayo Largo with I think Cayo Largo probably being the top notch of those three. One warning it does come at a price this is one of the more expensive destinations in Cuba. Now these all-inclusive resorts have, as I mentioned, a little bit for everybody. So when you go there, you've got beautiful rooms, you've got your own beach, they typically will have several pools, they'll have tennis courts, they've got multiple bars and different restaurants for you to, to, um, to dine at, and they'll have lots of other stuff to do. They've got a movie theater, they might do Spanish classes or dance classes, and they'll also help organize excursions so you can do snorkel trips or they can even help you do um, a scuba dive trip if you want to do that. And they also organize these great boat trips that take you to some of the other deserted islands in the archipelago so you can hang out there. Now, some of these deserted islands actually will have like a little tiki bar on them. So you can get dropped off there for four or five hours and you get a chaise lounge and you can kind of relax in the sun, go to the bar, have a mojito, have a quick snack, come back out and go for a swim in the warm ocean and just really relax for a good part of the day. And this is something that non-anglers will really love about this destination. 
Now let me go, go back to the restaurants and the bars. One thing that I've mentioned in the other videos, and you will see if you come to Cairo Largo, is that the food here is plentiful, but not necessarily incredible, right? So when you step into the buffet for the first day, you'll be kind of impressed. There's a lot there, but as you look at it closely, there's a lot of repetition. Uh, so that's very normal in Cuba, just to understand that in Cuba it's hard for them to get great supplies, and so this is just sort of the result of that. It's not a lack of effort uh, on their part. But one bit of good news is that within a day, you'll have figured it out, because there's always one really good station in the, in the cafeteria. I always think it's a pasta station. They always do a better job than the other places. And you'll find out that there's maybe one restaurant or one poolside bar where they have better food than the others. It's always the case, and you'll kind of figure that out. There's one other um, accommodation I will mention here. As I said, these sort of high-end, all-inclusive resorts are typically where guests stay. But once in a while, we have groups of pretty hardcore anglers, and they don't want all that frill. They don't want to be around families and you know romantic couples, and they don't need three pools and multiple restaurants. They just want something simpler that's really oriented around fishing. And Cayo Largo has a pretty good option for that, and it's called Villas Marinera. And this accommodation is located right at the marina where each day, one way or another, you're gonna meet your skiffs to go fishing. The accommodations are simpler. They're known for not having great water pressure, but they're within walking distance of uh, the skiffs. They've got their own little pool and common area to hang out. And they've got their own little restaurant. And so it's pretty nice. And of course, it comes at a lower price. Certainly not as nice as the other resorts, no question. Wherever place you stay at, you'll typically begin your day with breakfast. If you're an angler, you'll uh, be a little bit early than maybe the members of your family will be, but you'll have breakfast in the cafeteria. And then after that, you will go back and arrange and put together your lunch. You're given a Tupperware container at the beginning of the trip, and then you're able to go back through the buffet and, and put together whatever you would want for a lunch on the skiff. That may, be, might be rice and chicken or fish, or you can make sandwiches for yourself, grab some fresh fruit, grab some desserts, and you pack all that up, and then you will go typically to the entrance to the hotel where there's a time that's been set for you to meet your transportation to the marina. It's usually 7.30 or 7.40, something like that. And then you're taken in a van about seven or eight minutes drive along the island to this little marina where you will meet the fishing manager and your fishing guides. Now, if you're staying in Villas Marinera, you'll just walk, of course. On the first day, you'll have to bring everything with you, of course. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it's only the first day. So you bring all your rods and reels and your tackle bags and your flats, boots, and all that stuff. But then you're met by, met by the fishing manager and you'll be assigned your guide and together you will then assemble all your stuff. The guides want to be there with you on that first morning because they want to make sure you have things done like they will like it. The right lines, the right leaders, and the right flies all set up. And then at the end of each fishing day, they will rinse your stuff off and it will all get stored on site there because as I said, the fishing manager lives there and he's kind of got a common storage area where all the rods and reels can be put and your tackle bags and your flats, boots and all that other stuff can be stored. One way or another, whichever place you're staying at, you'll begin your day and end your day at this little marina where the skiffs are stored. Okay, let's finally talk about the fishing at Cayo Largo. If there's one fish that Cayo Largo is most renowned for, it's certainly the permit. The permit population here is abundant and the habitat is spectacular for permit. And let me explain that a little bit. So if you look at a satellite image of the area around Cayo Largo, you'll, you'll see that it's got a couple of things that are just perfect for permit. If you look at what's north of the island of Cayo Largo itself, remember that Cayo Largo is about 16 miles long and look at this huge expanse of shallow water that's on the north side of the island here. And that water is almost all between about two and a half and four feet, just perfect for permit. And better yet, this water is bordered quite closely with deep water, particularly on the southern side of Cayo Largo and the whole archipelago. And that is why it's perfect for permit. Permit, like to live in deep water and then go to shallow water to feed. And that's just exactly what happens here on Cayo Largo. Now, when you're pulling these uh, vast flats, on the beginning of, the, of a good tide, you can then be out here continually pulling for three or four, even five hours looking for permit. It's just massive, massive country. 
And what is typical at Cayo Largo is that the guides are almost always looking for permit that are in the company of rays. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't see free swimming permit. On occasion, you will. But the guides know that here the permit have learned that with the abundance of rays that like this habitat, that they can be beside the rays and follow the rays and then can eat all the stuff that those rays are stirring up as they look for the same food that the permit are looking for. So it's very, it's just a perfect situation for you as an angler for a couple of reasons. One is that a ray that is four feet by four feet makes a great target and the guide will tell you simply to put your fly on the back of that ray and then pull it off. And then permit or seeing, they're used to seeing stuff flee from the uh, feeding ray and very often without thinking, without looking closely, they'll simply just grab your fly. So much different than a tailing permit that you might, uh, you know, you've been through this before where you present the fly, you do everything perfect and they look at your fly and they follow your fly and then they speed off the flat at 40 miles an hour. This is very different. And if there's more than one permit, it can be even better because again, those fish are then kind of competing for food and they'll just, again, grab the fly quite quickly. Now, one other thing to just um, remark on here, and this kind of tells the story of why Cayo Largo is so famous for permit, or why it's so famous for permit, is you've all heard of the Avalon fly. You see it on all the tackle lists for permit flies around Cuba. The Avalon fly was created for the permit fishing here by Mauro Ginevri, who was the fishing manager here on Cayo Largo for many years and is still involved in the fishing operations in Cuba. And Mauro quick, quickly recognized that the permit that were here were largely feeding on shrimp. And that's what that fly imitates. And it's just the go-to fly absolutely for the permit fishing here. Now, there's also other great fishing outside of the permit fishing. There are lots of bonefish here. And if you look again at an overhead picture of this habitat, you'll see that there are very white, sandy bits of habitat. They're typically closer to the islands themselves. They're often in between islands, and they're very often on the southern shore of the islands. And that is perfect bonefish territory. It doesn't mean that you won't see permit on the bonefish flats, but they're not as prolific because the water is just a little bit too deep for them. So you'll see them in the slightly shallower water. There is some wading to be done here but it's kind of confined to a couple of areas. So most of the bone fishing is still out of the boat, but the bone fish on average, average on the larger side. There's really great bone fishing here. There's a lot of fish that are in that four, five, six pound category. And those are legitimate bone fish anywhere you go in the world. And there are certainly bigger bone fish as well up into that nine, 10 pound category. Now, when you talk about tarpon fishing, Cayo Largo is not a tarpon destination for you outside of the tarpon migration. So let's talk about that. Very nearby in Zapata, which is quite close by, and a little bit further away, but again on Cuba's south shore or is Gardens of the Queen. And both of these destinations have great perm or tarpon fishing throughout the course of the year, and it's because of their habitats. They've got massive expanses of mangroves, which the area around Cayo Largo does not have. Now, it's got a few resident tarpon. You will not know about them unless you've already caught a permit or a bonefish, because the guides will not um, take you in search of those fish unless you're en route to a Grand Slam, because there's so few of them, and they save them for those situations. But that all changes during the tarpon migration, which really starts in early April or so, and these fish start showing up, and they'll stay around through a lot of the summer, depending upon how the weather goes. Uh, so if the flats get really warm, they start to kind of clear out in July. But if you get that typical summer weather where there's thunderstorms in the afternoon, again, those tarpon will stay around through July and even into August. And these fish are largely between 30 and 70 pounds. There are certainly fish that get up to 100 and over 100 pounds. And you'll fish for them in a great variety of situations. You'll fish for them on the reef which is to the south bordering the deep water. You fish for them over white sand, you fish for them along the islands, you fish for them in channels, and you will fish for them in kind of back bays. Now I mentioned earlier in this video that this whole archipelago is part of one continuous habitat. At the west end is Island of the Youth, which is famous for tarpon. At the east end is Cayo Largo, which we're talking about, which is famous for permit and to degree bonefish. And, you know, these two, if you go to the middle, the fishing for the other fish gets better as you go that direction. So if I can kind of clarify that, if you're an island of the youth where there's lots of great tarpon fishing, the further you go towards Cayo Largo, the better the permit fishing and the bone fishing gets. And if you're fishing Cayo Largo, where it's got great permit fishing and bone fishing, the further you go to the west towards island of the youth, the better 
the tarpon fishing gets. So it's really all one continuous habitat, as they said. Now, the good thing is you don't have to worry about competing with anybody else. You are fishing an area that has been designated for guest fishing at Cayo Largo, and you will not cross a line where the other guests at, at Island of the Youth have their own territory. So you're never competing with them, and you're not competing with anybody else outside of the six skiffs that are designated to be fishing this area around Cayo Largo. So if I can just sum up Cayo Largo in a few sentences, and the most specific things that it's known for and best for. Number one, it is no question about it, one of the best fishing destinations you, you can go in the world that is also great for non-anglers because there is so much for them to do and to keep them occupied. That's quite unique and absolutely one of the top destinations for that situation. It also has to be considered one of the best permit destinations on the planet and certainly in the top couple in Cuba. No question, it's renowned for its great permit fishing. It also has great bone fishing that kind of goes along with that. Now, if you're lucky enough to go here during the tarpon migration of April, May, June, and July, you then get the third fish that we love to fish for as fly anglers, migratory tarpon, most of which are between 30 and 80 pounds, and that can be just spectacular fishing. So I think Cairo Largo is without question one of the best flats destinations on the planet, and it's certainly one to be considered as a top destination in Cuba. Bye -bye.